DeMar DeRozan, a six-time NBA All-Star, a two-time gold medalist for the United States men's basketball team. He is the all-time leader in points for the Toronto Raptors. I see you smiling at that. And he's just added author to his list of accolades. Above the noise is DeRozan in his own words, giving readers a candid glimpse into his childhood, his highs and lows on and off the court, and how important talking about mental health is particularly in pro sports. So we are thrilled to welcome DeMar DeRozan to our studios this morning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I always like to ask people about their morning routine. And yeah. can you please tell everybody what you told me? What time do you wake up every day? Uh, 4 a.m. And then what do you do? Uh, I get a couple workouts in, um, and my morning usually done by 8 a.m. Yeah, so you work out for like three and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. Try to get it, get it done earlier so I can have the rest of the day. Monday to Friday, and then the weekends are for you and the kids. Yes. Out of five now. It's a busy life. Yes, very busy. <laughs> this book, listen, we were just talking about this. It's relatively thin, but there is so much mm -hmm. in here. I wish we had more time because you share a lot. You talk about the sport. Mm -hmm. You talk about behind the scenes. You talk mm -hmm. about your family uh, growing up and working through mental health. But I want to start everybody where you start them in this book is this really powerful opening scene. You've gone back to Compton. Mm -hmm. You've got DR. She's just four at mm -hmm. the time. And you go back to Compton every year. And you're in a playground, and there's this slide, and it's tagged with graffiti. Mm -hmm. And she comes running over to you and she says, Daddy, somebody drew on the slide with yeah. crayons. Yeah. And you marvel at her innocence because at mm -hmm. four, you already knew what was actually on that slide. Yeah, I just showed you how, how the world comes full circle, you know, and it was a moment for me to share what it was like for me growing up um, in the inner city and, you know, how often we seen uh, graffiti tag, tag all over the wall, playground, and we thought it was normal. And for my daughter to think it was, you know, more of an art was kind of just a reflection of the two worlds that, you know, um, I kind of come from, you know, and, and trying to steer my, my, my kids and everybody in the right direction. What did that feel like that to her, she didn't know what that meant? Um, it just shows you the, the reality of what, what I grew up in, you know, and how hard I worked to not, you know, let my kids understand or see what it was like, what I what I had to go through. And that's, you know, that means a lot that I'm able to provide for my kids in a way that, you know, I didn't have. Uh, February 17th, 2018, you tweet about depression. Then you turned off your phone, which, by the way, scared a lot of people. Yeah. But in the book, you say this was after you watched a Jim Carrey interview where he was talking about depression. You knew something was wrong. You mm -hmm. could feel that you were off, and you went looking mm -hmm. for answers. And the word depressed, he says, was another way of saying deep, deep rest. rest. Yeah. What resonated with you about that? Just that whole interview, the way he broke it down from an emotional standpoint, what he felt, what he was going through, um, and it, it, I resonated with it from top to bottom, the whole interview, and it kind of it kind of hit me hard, and it made the most sense that I heard anybody kind of really express uh, depression um, in, a, in that moment, and this was somebody I grew up, you know, watching, always feeling like, you know, I could turn on Jim Carrey and find a laugh or yeah. find some entertainment. So somebody be dealing with something so heavy and you not know it, I kind of felt, felt, I felt them in that moment. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this and if there's somebody who is right now feeling like they're in pain and they don't know what to do with it or can identify it, they may find this interview on YouTube. What is it that you would want them to hear? I mean, the same, the same inspiration I find. You know, I, I, I went out searching, you know, um, for something I could, like I said, resonate to. And I came across a Jim Carrey interview and it gave me everything, the belief, the confidence, the, the feeling of not feeling alone. It gave me the inspiration to kind of, you know, scream out in a sense that I needed help or I was going through something and yeah. it, it got me here with you. Yeah, and how are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. It's very exciting, it's been fun um, going through this whole book journey. Yeah. Um, it's a first for me, you know, um, still nervous, uh, still a lot of kinks, you still gotta work out with expressing yourself so much in a yeah. book. Um, yeah. But it's a beautiful thing, you know, kinda gotta break yourself down and build, your, build yourself back up. You have so many Canadian fans. People, this city loves you. I know you know that, and the fans in this city loved you. And I love reading of moments we're like for you. Back in 2009, yeah. you were chosen by Toronto, number nine. You didn't have a passport. Mm -hmm. you, you're on the plane, and you look down, and the and the declaration form's in French, yeah. and you panicked a little bit because yeah. <laughs> you didn't realize Canada was even a bilingual country. You lived by yourself for a while because your family yeah. didn't have passports, so you yeah. were here and alone. What was it like to revisit those early days oh, in Toronto, being alone, looking out at the lake? Um, it was beautiful when I look back on it because it was something that I needed. Um, from a mental standpoint, from a from a place, I've, I've never, I ne to, up to that point, I've never been away from home. Yeah. So to come here and, and learn everything new, 
um, grow up fast, understand how to be a, a professional, work at my craft. It was something that I definitely needed, but it was something that was so new to me that that feeling, you know, can never be yeah. revisited again because it, it was so it was so new to me that every day was kind of kind of scary for me. But you know, I never forget the. I never forget my first winter here. I yeah. never forget my first winter coat. I never forget the first time I drove in snow. I had to leave my car on the side of the road because I didn't know how to drive in snow. So um, <laughs> I remember all these moments. Yeah, that's what CAA is for. I'm sure you learned that. Listen, I cannot let you leave without asking you. You know, you're 35 now. Mm -hmm. You still save a lot of time on the court, but listen, every year retirement gets a little bit closer. Yeah. Would you retire as a Raptor? I mean, this. Definitely a place I would want to go out some way, somehow, just to you know make the story right. You know, what can I, we do to make that happen for? I don't, I don't know. Let's 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 see. We know, I'm not sure how much time I got left, but it'd be very poetic to go go out um, from, in a place where it all started from. Uh, I know that you and uh, Kyle Lowry talk every day, and that you mm -hmm. Facetime. What have you told him about your trip to Toronto so far? Uh, he checked on me last night, and, and first thing he said, he know. Um, he know I'm tired <laughs> more so than anything. <laughs> but even last night we was talking when I was I was at din dinner and I was just telling him it's just so crazy how you forget how much love we really have in this place, you know. And it was it was a cool moment. We we literally talked about that last night. We laughed about it. And I told him I'll call him today when I once I finish with everything. Well, you know what? Um, we don't have time for this story, but there are some great stories about how when you first met. You did not like him. Yeah, yeah. And you were very clear about that in the yeah. book. And you'll have to buy the book to find out that story. It is called Above the Noise. A pleasure to have you here. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yep. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.